doing creative work is amazing, but also challenging. It can feel like playing a game of red light, green light. At the beginning, when you first start whatever the creative thing is that you're doing, whether it's making music, starting a YouTube channel, building an online business, it's all just super exciting. Everything's new and exciting. And it's like all green lights all day long. And you just are trucking down the highway. No, Nobody can stop me now. But inevitably, a red light shows up. That could be in the form of a negative comment on your channel could be in the form of not getting the results that you want uh, in the numbers after putting in a lot of work and it doesn't seem like things are working. Any number of things can kind of stop you in your tracks. And for a lot of us, myself included, we can go into this space where we were excited and now we go into the, we retreat into this place of needing someone to give us permission to continue down the path, to continue doing this thing that we feel like we were born to do. It's a tough place to be. I experienced that very recently, and I'm going to share the story about that later. It's a doozy of a story, and I think it'll be really instructive for you. So when, you, when you're when you doing creative work, especially in this world of, uh, if you're creating a YouTube channel, a lot like what we've been talking about here on this channel, where your goal is to really to teach, to share your knowledge, to share your experience with someone else, there's a level of audacity that comes into play where people are asking inside their heads, and you may be asking this about yourself, who do you think you are to tell someone else what to do? Or who do you think you are to say what's the best way to do X, Y, and Z? Um, and that question can be really crippling for a lot of people. For me, I've told you the story a little bit of how I started my business, Home Studio Corner, which is built around helping people learn how to make great sounding music in a home recording studio. So this is I'm in my studio right now. It's a fun process, but people get stuck. They hit their own red light. They buy the equipment, and then they can't get it to sound good. That's where I come in. I help them figure out how to develop better skills and, and habits to create better sounding music. Anyway, uh, when I started out, I was just a guy who happened to have a degree in audio, but I wasn't a world-renowned audio engineer. I certainly had not won a Grammy. I hadn't worked on any project you would have ever heard, right? I was basically a hobbyist. I had a job selling music equipment, so I knew a lot about the equipment. I knew how to run a big recording studio if I had to, uh, but I, I, it wasn't like I was famous for anything at all. I was a good musician who knew how to do recording, and that was all I brought to the table, and that was enough. When I started Home Studio Corner, I thought I wanted to create something. I just had an urge to create. YouTube was a younger thing. This was 15 years ago. YouTube was a younger thing. Uh, I had found a few videos on music production on the internet, and I thought, that's amazing. But there were only two on this one website, and I thought, there should be more. This is really fascinating. And I thought, well, I could do that. And in a moment of, of hubris... Uh, a moment of audacity, I said, well, shoot, I know a lot. I'll start sharing some of that. And it was born out of that that desire to help to share what I know. And from a, yes, there's some hubris there, but also a humility of, I don't know everything. I can only speak confidently to this group of people. This group of people, which is basically me from, you know, five, 10 years ago, former me, I can speak to them because I've gotten to a place where I'm able to do some things with regards to songwriting, music production, that type of thing. There's a group of people that want to get to where I am. I'm not, you know, world famous music producer, but I've done some stuff and I I've, there are people I can help. That was it. That was the the bare criteria was can can I do something helpful for someone? Yes. Okay, let's do that. And I did not wait for permission. You don't need permission to be helpful. Let's say that again. You don't need permission to be helpful. And I think especially coming out of an era of, you know, things like you had to, as a musician, you waited around for a record label to choose you to record your album to make your music. And if that didn't happen, you didn't get a chance to make your music. That was true a couple decades ago. But now, if you got a computer and a couple of pieces of equipment, you can make music. And no one can stop you, and no one should stop you. You don't need permission anymore. The gatekeepers are gone. Well, they're still there, but now you also can do your thing. You can create something. Nobody needs to give you permission. Here's the thing. Criticism is really easy. 
creation, creating things is hard and it's risky. So it's easy for someone to sit back and criticize the work that you're doing. That's easy. Criticizing is easy, especially now, right? We all have family members who can be overly critical. That's its own challenge. But on the internet, you can be critical without ever having to look someone in the eye without ever having to shake their hand, without ever having to be in the room with them, you can be brave behind a keyboard. And so that's going to happen. You're going to get those comments. And it's so easy to be critical. It is so much harder to create. It's easy to criticize. It's hard to create. It's risky to create. I've mentioned him several times already on this channel, but there's a marketing guru named Seth Godin who talks a lot about marketing in general, read some of his books, they're fantastic. But one of the things I love is he says some of the best business people, entrepreneurs and artists are the ones who say, this might not work. I'm going to engage in something and I don't know if it's going to work. Now, if you hear that, two things probably happen. One, it makes you excited because this might not work, but it might work. That's why you're watching this video. That's why you're thinking about these ideas of creating value for the world and having the audacity to think I'm going to create an online business that both helps people, makes people's lives better and generates an income for me. How dare you? How dare you dream so big? So the idea that it might not work means that it actually might work. But the other side of that coin, of course, is the fear of what if it fails? What if I put time, effort, maybe even money into this thing and it flops. It doesn't do what I want it to do. That's, that's, that's the game, right? You can't have the reward without the risk. And it's so much easier just to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit back, get on my keyboard and just go criticize the ones who do have the courage to put themselves out there and to do something. And it's, it makes sense, right? If you put yourself out there, you become a target. Um, you know, the, there's lots of cliche sayings around it, but there's a lot of truth there. Like the tallest blade of grass is the one that gets cut. The tallest tree hears the thunder the loudest. That's the one I heard the other day that I thought was fantastic. Um, you're by, by the very nature of giving yourself a shot to create some value and to have a real impact. You're also putting a target on your back. Now it's not the worst thing but it can happen. I don't get hundreds of mean comments every day, but I get the occasional one that can kind of get stuck in my head. Um, so here's the story of a recent experience. Uh, as I mentioned, Home Studio Corner has been my main business for the last 15 years, focused predominantly on the, the process of music production. So that's typically divided into three categories, recording, mixing, mastering. Everything pretty much can be summed up into those three things, except for the world of songwriting, right? You can't record if you don't have a song. And I've mentioned and talked about songwriting in bits and pieces over the years, and I've always been writing songs and producing them and all of that, but I'd never created a course about songwriting. So at the end of last year, we, we, we realized we'd gone through a season of creating uh, our three main flagship courses, kind of taking all of our old courses that we made over the years, retiring those, and like creating a killer set of three courses that walk through those three main things, recording, mixing, mastering. We did that. And we upgraded our membership last year with some new tiers, and we a lot of things in place. We got it to, we had a vision about three, four years ago, and now we've we've arrived there. The business looks like we wanted it to look in terms of what we offer. And so then the question was, all right, what next? What's next? I love that question. What's next? Uh, I love pursuing something new. And the next thing for me was pretty obvious is a songwriting course. I was hesitant to do that because I'm, I'm very confident in being able to teach you how to set up a microphone and record something and then mix it and make it sound good. Um, songwriting is a lot more touchy feely. It's a lot more subjective and even though there are absolutely mechanics at play, just like with every skill where you learn, you know, there's, yes, it's, there's inspiration involved. Yes, there's some of it's about feel, but there's a lot of mechanics like this goes here, this goes there. There's a lot of stuff to be taught because I've learned that stuff over the years of writing hundreds of songs. So it seemed like a pretty obvious thing to do. Not all of my customers are songwriters, but most of them are. And I was thinking this is probably going to be useful for some people, but it's not going to be for everybody was kind of my thought. But my wife and business partner pushed me 
to lean into it because I I'd had those feelings before and I'd been wrong where it was popular even though I thought a specific thing wasn't going to be that popular. So uh, over the course of we started shooting, planning and shooting that video in like January. And then we finished it up in February to launch in late February. So pretty quick turnaround. It wasn't a massive course like some of my other ones. It's something I could accomplish in about a six-week period. Um, got it done, prepared for the launch, which we'll talk about launches at some point around here. Um, and part of that launch involved releasing one of the bonus videos for the course as a free free video, as a promotion for the upcoming launch of the course. And that involved talking about songwriting on my YouTube channel for a couple of videos, that free video was out there, and then the marketing emails leading up to the launch. So the doors were open, I was sending an email every day for about a week, uh, and of course, when you do that, people, some people get mad that you're emailing them, and then the occasional person comes out of the woodwork with kind of guns ablazing. And there was one specific person who wrote me a big long email about because about the songwriting course, and he, I, I, I won't go into all of it, but his basic question was, who are you to teach somebody else about songwriting? You don't, I don't know of any of your songwriting credentials. Why should anyone listen to you? And he went on to say, like, you're giving the people the impression that anyone can make art. And I was like, yes, I am. Um, and he was saying like, not everybody can just, just because you have a computer doesn't mean you can make good music. And I'm thinking you are squarely in the permission camp. The, the world that says I cannot do something until someone like with a magic wand says, you may now do that thing. So there are certain things in the world where that's true, right? I can't practice medicine just because I decided I want to, right? I got to go through the proper channels. I can't be a lawyer without going to law school and getting my law license, law license, my license to practice law. That, and those are well and good, right? I don't want to go to a doctor who hasn't been trained in medicine. Uh, my father is a physician, so I completely get that. However, there are many, most things in the world, especially things like this, creative endeavors. You don't need anyone to say, you may now do this. You have your license. You have your certification to create art, to create YouTube videos, to talk about something that you're passionate about. That's left over from an old era. I imagine the person who wrote this email is an old fart who is squarely in the camp of, if you haven't been picked by, let's say, the Grammy Association, a Grammy Award, then you have no credibility. If you haven't been in a top, here's one thing was I didn't have a top 40 hit on top 40 songs, right? Top 40 radio. Therefore, I have nothing to say about this. And I, I, I feel sad for the uh, people who feel that way because it, it, it gives you an excuse to not do. It gives you an excuse to say, well, since I'm not that, then I can't do anything really. That's kind of the place where it comes from. And then you project that on everybody else. So coming at me being like, you you don't have the success and the qualifications to do this. What gives you, like he asked like straight up, like, why do you think you should be releasing a songwriting course? And I, I normally, with, he was being somewhat respectful in all these comments, but you could tell he was irked. And so I actually took the beginning of his email said, can you stand up to some hard questioning? And I was thinking, challenge accepted. So I actually took each of his questions and answered them very kindly. I wasn't trying to get in a fight. Um, and he wrote back, said, good answer to the questions. But he still was like, you don't need to be doing this. Um, but my question, my answer was, like, what gives me the right? I've done it, and I've done it well. At least I think so. And a couple hundred thousand people agree with me, right? I've got a YouTube channel with 200-something thousand followers that like what I have to say. And a lot of those have asked me to create a songwriting course. I've had people say, you going to do a songwriting course? Um, a lot of people like what else that I do. And so they're like, of course I want to learn from you. Um, I, didn't, I, I had permission in the sense of my people, the people that I serve, the people that I care about. Um, and I didn't even need that permission per se. I just knew this thing would most likely be valuable for them. So let's try it. However, I did not know that it would work. I did not know for sure. There is always the chance that I put a bunch of work into something and I put it out there and it does not sell at all. That's always a possibility. However, that was not the case. Um, the sale went on to bring in about 
over the course of a week, it brought in about 45 grand. Uh, not my biggest uh, that I've done, but certainly something that I'm happy with. And now I have another course in my collection of things to sell. Um, and, and people are going nuts over it. I really thought this would be like a side thing that people would like. A few people would enjoy it, but people are, they're going through the course right now. I'm checking in with the comments every day. They're doing the challenges. They're doing the homework assignments. Um, and it's blowing them away. And I am, I am constant. Every time that happens, I'm so humbled and honored, uh, because it really is creating value. It was one of those things I thought it was valuable, but I wasn't sure. Now I'm getting some validation that it is. But again, this takes, I think the word of the day is audacity. You have to have the audacity to step forward and say something definitive, to say something like, this is how I write songs. The person who sent me the email was saying, who are you to tell people what they should and shouldn't do? And I said, I'm actually, I'm not. I am, everything I do, I'm sharing from my experience what has worked for me and for people that I help. That's it. I've never claimed to be anything I'm not. If I said, this is how Grammy Award winners write songs, unless I'd written a song with a Grammy Award winner, I can't say that. And I wouldn't say that. Um, I just spoke from my own experience. And nobody can take away my own experience. Nobody can tell me that I can't talk about that anymore. And it's a very freeing place to be, albeit... Stressful because someone questioning you, depending on your personality, can, for me at least, I'm very sensitive to a lot of things emotionally. So when people question me, I get in my feels about it and I start to question myself. So let's talk about that questioning. Let's talk about kind of ways to, when you inevitably get that question, whether it's external, someone else is saying it to you, or internal, you're saying it to yourself because you have some self doubt, which is completely normal, by the way. Let's talk about that. So questioning your credentials, questioning if you have any credibility to speak towards something. You may be surprised that I'm going to say this, but that's a good thing. It is a good thing to question someone's credibility. We all do it. So if you popped on a YouTube channel um, and you decided you wanted to get into woodworking and someone popped up and said, here's the top 10 things you need to know for to become a good woodworker, you would A you would start off probably believing them because who would make a video like that if they didn't know what they were talking about. But at some point, you're going to say, okay, I've watched a few of this person's videos. I I don't know if what they're saying makes sense because I'm not a woodworker yet. Um, They seem credible, but I'd like to know, like, have they done it? Like, have they actually done woodworking? You just naturally go to this place of, a healthy skepticism of, is this person trustworthy? Can I trust this person? Have they done the thing they're claiming to have done? And if they're a good content creator, it's easy to see. So with Home Studio Corner, if you ever question if I make good sounding music, if I have any credibility, you're not going to find me on the Grammy or the Billboard charts, but you can go search my name. You you right now could go search Joe Gilder in Spotify, Apple Music, however you listen to music, and you can go listen to a whole bunch of my music. There's a whole bunch of music there for you to listen to. And you can say, ah, okay, that sounds great. Cool. He did that in Home Studio. Let me go back and now, now I'm listening with an ear of, ah, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. So, of course, of course you can't just blindly claim um, that what you're saying is good and true and helpful without any experience, right? No one would trust, you know, just because you have a lot of passion doesn't mean that you have the experience and the right, in that sense, to teach people something if you don't really know it, Um Everyone's asking, why should I listen to you? Why should I believe you? Why should I trust you? And that's a good thing. You got to, even though even though the negative comments, I hate them, and a lot of times they're coming not from a good place. Um, hate is a strong word, but they're, they're difficult. Um, there's a part of it that's good. They're saying, they're saying basically that, who do you think you are? What gives you the right to share what you're sharing? You got to have an answer to that question inside your head. Whether you put it out there, you don't have to start every video defensive saying, hey, I know you don't trust me, but let me give you the reasons why you should trust me. It it should be more organic. It should just be obvious through what you do that you have experience and you you demonstrate that regularly. Um, But in your own mind, without doing it in the public, you need to have those answers to your question. Why? Why? What am I bringing to the table? Why should someone listen to me? Why should they trust me? What am I? What am I doing that's good for them? Got to have that question in mind. And that leads us to the next piece of it, which is quality. You've got to be good at what you do. It's a must. It is a must. You can't, you know, if Gordon Ramsay couldn't cook, 
he wouldn't have the Gordon Ramsay empire, right? He wouldn't have the restaurants, and he certainly wouldn't have uh, all the TV shows and this, this massive media empire that he has if he couldn't really cook. So if the thing that you want to talk about you're not necessarily good at, that's a problem. I'm not saying you have to be best in the world, but you've got to be good at the thing that you're teaching. You've got to know it well enough to be able to teach it. Um, just the other day, I just got a new, it's a looper pedal, if you're familiar with. It's a pedal that you can play, plug guitar and microphone into, and you can loop yourself over and over and build out these cool sounding songs. It's it's a whole thing. I get into it every, once, every few years. Uh, but I bought a new one, and I watched a few videos, and I feel like I understand it pretty well. I could... St- Part of me says, I should do a video on this. I'll talk about what's so great about this. I've had it for like two days. I've barely put it through its paces. I am not qualified to teach on that thing just yet. I've not used it enough. And that's the piece that I want to hammer home here. Not in the sense of you got to know everything and be the expert on everything before you have permission to say anything. Again, we're not talking about permission, but you have to be good. And there's no exceptions to that rule. No exceptions. you got to be good at the thing. You can't have a sense of entitlement that just because I built it, it's valuable. Just because I made a video on a topic doesn't give you the right to get a bunch of views. You've got to be good at the thing you're talking about. You've got to be good at explaining the thing that you're talking about. Um, And then you've got to be good at making videos and being engaging. All of those, there's so many pieces that have to come into play. We talked about that in the last video about lazy content. You may know your your subject matter, but if you're lazy when it comes to creating the content, then it's not going to do as well. People can sense, whether it's subconscious or not, how much effort you're putting into this thing. And if you're not putting a lot of effort into it, then it makes sense that it's probably not working very well. Now, I said you have to be good at what you do. You don't have to be the best, but you do need to be on a path of constant improvement. When I started Home Studio Corner, I wasn't the best. I wasn't at the level I am now from a musician standpoint, songwriting standpoint, production standpoint, and certainly from a making videos standpoint. I'm not saying I had to get all of those things in place before I started, but I did start from a place of having some expertise, some expertise. And the dirty little secret of teaching is you get better as you teach. So you're not going to be your best version of you in that first year of creating your content. But you will start improving dramatically in the process of kind of codifying all the stuff that you know currently, building on that knowledge and learning how to teach it, how to share it with the world. So it feels like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. I'm saying you've got to be good, but also that you've got to be improving and that you will get better through creating content, through helping people, through teaching the things that you know. I was talking to a friend the other day, another YouTuber. We did a live stream together, and I told him, like, the dirty secret of being a YouTuber is you get better at the thing that you're teaching. It's awesome. It's incredible. Um, I would not be where I am from a musician or even content creation standpoint if I wasn't creating the content that I'm creating. I'm a better mix engineer, music producer, songwriter from talking about it and teaching what I know. It seems backwards, and maybe you even have a a part of you feels icky about that. It's not. You're speaking from your own experience, and then you get better at those things as you talk about them. It's great. It's awesome. It's fascinating. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're creating your content is your content will not be for everyone. You will not be for everyone. Uh, Hopefully, if you watch my video on choosing your niche, you know the people to whom you're speaking, the people that you want to serve, And you've got to keep in mind that people will come and go. People will find you, they will dig into what you're doing, and then they will decide this person's not for me. And that's okay. Uh, Reminds me of dating. I didn't date a whole lot. I dated a handful of girls until I met my wife, and she was the one, and I got to stop dating, which was wonderful. Uh, But dating is essentially saying, are we, at least from my perspective, I'm going to date you until we decide if we should get married or not. And if the answer is no, then we stop and we're fine, right? Doesn't mean breaking up is easy, but that's that's the ultimate for me. At least that was the goal. I'm trying. I'm looking for my wife. I didn't start off that way. Hey, will you be my wife? And then also, let's go on a date. But that's the underlying question that I was trying to find out. And once I met Pam, I said, "Aha, she's the one." So anyway, um, it's the same here. People come, they find your content. They're like, "Okay, is this a person I want to hang out with?" The answer is either yes or no, and it's fine. There are plenty of people in the world. You speak to your people. Just know that you're not going to be for everyone, and that's okay. And occasionally, you're going to have to tell people that. Hey, I'm just not for you. I've got another commenter right now. He shows up about once a week and just writes mean stuff, thinks I don't know what I'm talking about, doesn't like my advice, and he gets in my head. Um, He usually writes on Saturday morning, so in my head I'm guessing he got drunk on Friday 
is hung over on Saturday and mad at the world. And then he comes and he comes to my channel and leaves mean comments. So anyway, I'm, I'm curious to see if he does it again this Saturday, but he gets in my head. I'm clearly not for him. He's at this point, he's obsessing over me, which is both flattering and maddening, but um, it's going to happen. You're not for everyone and that's okay. You don't have to be, no one is for everyone. Um, the other piece of this talking about quality again is you're not going to get better through blind repetition. So just by creating a bunch of stuff, we talked about this in the last video, quality itself doesn't lead to quantity unless you have a focus on both. Um, if you try to make really great videos and you just don't make that many videos, you're going to have a hard time getting better. But if you try to just make a whole bunch of videos without focusing on quality and getting better at that process, then it's not going to serve you much better. So there needs to be a focus on quality and quantity. Both of those can work hand in hand. All right, so we've gone through a lot. Hopefully you've got some ideas and some tactics, some things to take away to get yourself inspired, to create the things you were made to create, but also to be ready for the negative voices when they come in, because they will. Whether it's coming from in here or out there, it's going to happen. Um, and the, the big key with all of this, we talked about the repetition piece, is being on a path of steady improvement. Occasionally someone will say a mean comment or a seemingly mean comment, and they have a good point. They might say, you did this, and that didn't sound very good for me in my music videos. And, the, and I'll say, you know what? They're right. They're right. And that will be helpful, and that will help me improve for the next time. Sometimes they're just mean, but sometimes there's room for improvement. And improvement should be the name of the game. You should be in a constant diet of figuring out where you're do, what you're doing well and what you're not doing well and how to improve those things. If you're not getting better you're missing a huge piece of this whole game. And that's, I say the word game because I've developed a, what I call business game plan. Uh, and the, a big component of that, the last two, the M and the E of the game acronym have to do with figuring out what you're doing, measuring what you're doing, and then figuring out a way to adjust what you're doing in relation to the data that you're getting. So you've got to be, and this is a whole process, like a cycle, a feedback loop of steady improvement. If you stop that feedback loop, things start to go stale, and things stop moving. You lose that momentum that you had. If you want to check out my business game plan, I've got it. It's all on one sheet of paper. Uh, it includes about a 45-minute master class walking you through that entire process, which is the process that I've used to build my business over at Home Studio Corner. Go check that out at joegilder.biz slash game. I'd love for you to check that out. That'll also get you on the email list, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and finally, thanks so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, would you do me a favor and click the subscribe button here? And if you want to watch another video from me, check this out. Thanks for watching.